Have you ever thought about what would happen if we lived in a utopian society? A society where people live together without envy, greed, or pride? Don't think about it too much. There is a guy who knows the answer to that question. Bernard Mandeville, an 18th century philosopher, had a unique perspective on human nature and vices. In his work, The Fable of the Bees, he argued that a world of complete peace and devoid of vices is not possible. It would be utterly impossible to raise any multitudes into a populous, rich, and flourishing nation without the assistance of what we call evil, both natural and moral. Mandeville believed that vices, which are often considered bad behaviors like greed and selfishness, could have unexpected positive effects on society. When individuals pursue their self-interest, it can unintentionally lead to benefits for society as a whole. This concept challenges the common belief that vices are entirely detrimental. We shall easily perceive that no societies could have sprung from the amiable virtues and loving qualities of man, but on the contrary, that all of them must have had the origin from his wants, his imperfections, and the variety of his appetites. We shall find likewise that the more their pride and vanity are displayed and all their desires enlarged, the more capable they must be of being raised into large and vastly numerous societies. One of the primary reasons Mandeville argued that a world of peace without vices is not possible is because he saw vices as drivers of economic prosperity. So all these things we call vices, greed, vanity, selfishness, they're not all bad. In fact, they can be secretly good for society. Frugality is like honesty, a mean, starving virtue that is only fit for small societies of good, peaceable men who are contented to be poor so they may be easy. But in a large, stirring nation, you may have soon enough of it. It is an idle, dreaming virtue that employs no hands and therefore very useless in a trading country where there are vast numbers that one way or other must be all set to work. Mandeville believed that people's self-interest and the desire for material wealth could lead to increased economic activity. For example, individuals striving for better lives may work harder, invest in businesses, and create jobs, contributing to overall economic growth. In Mandeville's view, the pursuit of vices like wealth, status, and comfort could lead to a more prosperous society. Prodigality has a thousand inventions to keep people from sitting still that frugality would never think of. And as this must consume a prodigious wealth, so avarice again knows innumerable tricks to raise it together, which frugality would scorn to make use of. Mandeville also emphasized the importance of vices in maintaining social order. He argued that self-interest and competition was necessary for a well-functioning society. While these vices might seem negative on the surface, he believed they played a crucial role in keeping society balanced. For example, the desire for recognition and status, driven by vices like vanity and envy, could motivate individuals to achieve great things in fields such as art, science, and technology. These accomplishments might not have happened without the competitive spirit that vices can foster. If we look narrowly into it, we shall find that the sacrifice of ease and pleasure is only made to envy and the love of glory. Those who immediately lose by the misfortunes of others are very sorry, complain, and make a noise. But the others who get by them, as there always are such, hold their tongues, because it is odious to be thought the better for the losses and calamities of our neighbor. The various ups and downs compose a wheel that always turning round gives motion to the whole machine. Mandeville argued that the presence of poverty and economic inequality helped maintain social order. He believed that if everyone were equally wealthy, there would be no one to perform essential but less desirable jobs. Poverty, he thought, created a form of social division where some people were incentivized to work hard to avoid poverty, and others were motivated to provide services and labor that were crucial for society. The only thing that can render the laboring man industrious is a moderate quantity of money, for as too little will, according as his temper is, either dispirit or make him desperate, so too much will make him insolent and lazy.
All men are more prone to ease and pleasure than they are to labor, so that they have nothing to stir them up to be serviceable but their wants, which it is prudence to relieve, but folly to cure. Ultimately, whether a world without vices is possible or desirable is a complex philosophical debate that continues to engage scholars and thinkers today.